A lot of people ask me, where do I get my vitamin B12 from? And like everybody else in the world, including all the vegan animals out there, I get my vitamin B12 from a waste product of bacteria. And I'm going to be sharing with you guys all the different kind of bacteria that produce vitamin B12 right here. Now, almost all these kinds of bacteria are everywhere around us, like Streptococcus. They are found in our skin, in our nose, in our throat, in our mouth. And then you got lactose bacillus, and you can find this in the gut, in the mouth, in the vagina. Uh, I even heard that you can find vitamin B12 in semen. Not that I recommend getting your vitamin B12 from that source, uh, but if you're into it, I guess go for it. And then there is salmonella in poop, and you find poop in a lot of different places. Uh, people don't wipe their hands. Uh, I don't even want to get into it, but it's definitely found in the meat supply. Um, especially everybody's going to be eating their uh, thanks pooping turkey pretty soon. I definitely recommend to disinfect your counters if you're going to be eating uh, turkey, or not even eat it. Go vegan. It's better for you. And then, um, you know, definitely in the chicken, uh, you know, that clean source of protein, which all these, how do I take up as much space in the world as I can, bodybuilders recommend. Uh, anyway, uh, let me clear that up for you. <laughs> it's definitely, you're eating, it's not clean. You're eating poop and a whole bunch of other things. It's uh a lot of things you don't want to eat, like arsenic and antibiotics and a whole bunch of other things. Uh, you know, you don't have to eat that stuff. And also, it's also found in water supplies, um, you know, natural springs and ponds and rivers and lakes. Now, all these things have vitamin B12 because there, you know, might be a little bit of poop uh, in the, in the, you know, with the fish and everything pooping in there. There's like poop everywhere. Well, the thing is with a, with, you know, with the water supply nowadays, it's very clean. At least it is in America. We put uh, chlorine, we put fluoride. Uh, this is great because we don't get, uh, except for the main the fluoride part, it, um, but in the main point is that, you know, we don't get typhoid anymore because we had a clean water supply. Uh, the only problem is that we don't get vitamin B12. Uh, now there's an interesting plausible theory out there, and this has been proposed by Doug Graham, the author of the 801010 book. I uh, highly recommend checking that out. Um, that since all these bacteria are everywhere around us and they're so small, they probably even float in the air. And since vitamin B12 is a waste product of bacteria and that's really small, that probably floats in the air too. So vitamin B12 is everywhere around us. But, it's, you know, this sounds great in theory that we shouldn't be have to worry about vitamin B12. The only problem is that there's a lot of people who come down with vitamin B12 deficiencies, and especially with the vegans. You know, there is some exceptions. There's, um, like, Christina from Foley Raw. She's been doing this diet for seven years. And she gets her blood work checked regularly. And, you know, no vitamin B12. She doesn't supplement with it. Uh, Andrew Perlot uh, is another one. He doesn't take vitamin B12. And he's been doing it a lot longer than I have. Uh, and then there's Chris Kendall, which I heard that he even went up in vitamin B12 on this diet. Now, there is some people that come down, you know, long-term vegans that come down with vitamin B12 deficiency that don't take supplements. Um, Dr. Goldhammer, Don Bennett, Doug Graham. Um, it's an interesting case with Doug Graham. The reason why he thinks he had came down with vitamin B12, uh, he thinks it was eating from too much, uh, he was eating too much cold food, um, eating too much, uh, he was, at the time, he was eating a lot of frozen mangoes. Uh, he was having a lot of stress at the time. And he took a little bit of vitamin B12 and got better. Um, now, talking about Doug Graham, now he says that you shouldn't worry about vitamin B12 unless you have symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency. And I find this to be very dangerous because uh, the first symptom of vitamin B12 deficiency could mean that you already have uh, some kind of uh, neurological um, damage or you have some, you know, some kind of nerve damage, brain damage. Um, a lot of people, they get uh, gray hairs from vitamin B12. Uh, you know, it's, it's something you don't want to mess with. Uh, in my opinion, you should, everybody should just start taking vitamin B12, even the non-vegans, just to be on the safe side. Now, supposedly Doug Graham can cure people of some forms of vitamin B12 deficiency by putting them on a water fast. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. But that would be very interesting. Maybe they have to heal their gut or some kind of, or maybe there's something with the water fasting to increase their vitamin B12. That would be very interesting if that was the case.
So with all this controversy with uh, vitamin B12, I decided to take vitamin B12 supplements. Um, now I've been vegan for close to 10 years and only uh, last couple years that I started taking vitamin B12. And you know, something I don't, I don't feel any different. Oh, I also want to mention that I did take some fortified food and multivitamins every once in a while when I was eating, you know, you know, standard vegan diet out there. But the thing is, I, I don't feel any different with taking vitamin B12. Um, I, uh, I wish I got my levels checked prior to taking vitamin B12 uh, supplements just to see if I was low on it and if it really made any difference taking vitamin B12. Um, also, I want to mention that I take the methyl variety of vitamin B12 because it's the active form of vitamin B12. There's a cyanocombolamin um, version of uh, vitamin B12. Um, now, when I went to school, when I went to my dietetic school um, at Western Illinois, a lot of people don't know this, but I have a dietetic uh, degree. Um, they recommended vitamin B12, the methyl variety of vitamin B12. And also, uh, this is also recommended by Dr. McDougall. Um, he actually found that the, he would post, it, there's a lot of um, controversy with cyanocombolamin. Uh, there's a study showing that it's not good for uh, certain kind of neurological disorders out there. Um, you should hear some kind of, you should hear some of the conspiracy theories behind the cyanocombolamin because it's got a cyanide, uh, it's got cyanide attached to it. A lot of people say, oh, it breaks off, and then the cyanide is going to go to your brain. You're going to have brain damage from, you know, taking the cyanocombolamin. So I just take the methyl variety. And I take the vitamin shoppy version of, uh, the liquid vitamin shoppy version of it. You can get this online, too. Recently, they just had a buy one, get one free of this. So I have, like, a three years, uh, three years worth of vitamin B12. It's, um, it costs about... You know, ten bucks a bottle, and this usually lasts about well, like a, a year and a half. And the reason why I like uh, the liquid one uh, is because it's easier to take, and it doesn't have a lot of fillers in it. Another thing I like about this particular brand is that they don't put any preservatives in their uh, vitamin B12, their liquid vitamin B12, um, which is good because uh, a lot of these supplements I've seen with the vitamin B12 is they put sodium, uh, potassium sorbate in there. In their products, and this is a poison. Um, you could look it up on nutritionfacts.org. Look up potassium sorbate, and you can find that's not good for you. So you could. Uh, another thing is is that there isn't really much ingredients in this. Uh, there's vegetable glycerin, which is kind of like a natural sweetener. Uh, there's water, citric acid, um, natural raspberry flavor. Uh, this is the vegan for, uh, form of it. Um, <laughs> this is that there's another natural uh, flavoring of raspberry out there that's not vegan and they get this from uh, the urine and some kind of yellow uh, secretion from a beaver's butt and <laughs> I guess the the beaver uh, likes to mark its territory with the scent so I guess somebody out there uh, sniffed some log out there and go oh, this smells really good you know, it smells like strawberries. Also, also you can make, uh, you could get uh, strawberry scent from this uh, beaver uh, excrement type thing. Um, so, you know, they started, uh, they found out it was the beaver who was making the scent, and they started using that for natural flavorings. So, um, but uh, I'll post a link if you guys want to know more about that too in the description. Also, it's got a little bit of natural berry flavor, and that's vegan too. Now I'm going to talk about dosing. Now I take 500 micrograms, which is five millionths of a gram. You can't even see that. So if anybody says your diet's so deficient, well, tell them you know I take five micrograms or 500 micrograms, which is five millionths of a gram. And I take this one time a week. That's it. Uh, this is a recommendation that was given um, by Dr. McDougall. And he works with uh, thousands of people doing a vegan diet. So I take 12 drops, which I'm going to show you right now. You want to put this underneath your tongue for 30 seconds. And, uh, and also the color of the vitamin B12 is bright red. So that's not artificial coloring or anything like that.
Um, so we wait 30 seconds. I'm not going to wait a whole 30 seconds, but you guys get the point. And also, this vitamin B12 is also uh, made by bacteria. So it's not synthetic or anything like that. Um, I'll put the name of the bacteria right here. I know I took a microbiology class, but I, I don't have, I have no idea how to say this. So there's like two different kind of bacteria that could possibly make up this uh, vitamin B12 supplement. Now a lot of people think this is just a vegan issue and it's not. A uh, study that I reviewed, close to 40% of Americans are low in vitamin B12 unless there's a lot of vegans that I don't know about there. And then there's 10 to 30% of people that can't absorb vitamin B12 from their food for whatever reason. Maybe they got Crohn's disease, uh, which is linked to milk, by the way. Um, also, you know, a lot of people are taking these uh, pharmaceutical drugs and a lot of these things are, uh, you know, they stop the absorption of vitamin B12. Alcohol stops the absorption of vitamin B12 too. And when you get older, it's harder to absorb vitamin B12. So I think everybody should be taking vitamin B12. And also, this is just not a people issue. Even our cats are coming down with vitamin B12 deficiency. You could actually get vitamin B12 shots for your cat at the vet. Um, you know, you know, even canned cat food, you know, they have vitamin B12 in it. You know, why do they have vitamin B12 in it when it's got chicken, liver, turkey, meat byproducts in it? Um, it's also got zinc in it, too. I thought that was just a vegan issue. It's also got taurine and vitamin A, and vitamin K, and vitamin D. And a lot of things that people say, oh, that's just a vegan issue. Well, you know, why do they put it in the cat food then? So... You know, a lot of people are going to be, I'm sure there's going to be people out there that's going to be like, well, you know, the reason why that it's not in the cat food is because they, they cook the crap out of the meat, right? Um, you know, you know, you got to eat the meat raw. Well, you know, if you want to eat your meat raw, you know, be my guest, uh, but let me forewarn you, do a Google image search for MRSA uh, infection. And tell me if you want to eat meat after that, because that's found in the meat supply, MRSA. It's one of the worst in, uh, bacteria infections that you can get, and it's in the meat supply. It's dangerous. You definitely want to watch out for that. And even if you get the best quality meat, say you go out and shot your own wild boar or something, you have to worry about you know uh, worms and stuff growing in the animal and stuff like that. You don't even want to have to bother with that. Just go vegan, take a little bit of vitamin B12 every once in a while, and you'll be fine. So that's all I want to say about vitamin B12. Uh, do share this with your friends and family. I want to try to get an uh, informative video out every Monday or Wednesday. And also I want to throw in some more weightlifting videos. I know my uh, deadlift kind of went down after doing those high rep uh, uh, challenges that I did for myself. So I'm, I'm getting back up in the weights again. Uh, bench pressing, doing really good. Uh, that would really inspire me. Uh, seeing these videos of weightlifting and everything like that. So I'm definitely going to keep those rolling for you guys. Also, I have a recipe book out there. It's called The Fruit and Strength Ultimate Raw Vegan Dressing and Ice Cream Sauce Recipe Guide. And you get this uh, by donations, $8. And I'll make sure to leave your uh, address. I'll post a link down below where you can get this. And also, if you're going to the Woodside Fruit Festival, do sponsor me, and that would really help me out. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of weightlifting there and classes and hill sprints. So a lot of good things there I'm going to be doing at the Woodside Fruit Festival. So I'll see you guys next time. Do uh, subscribe to these videos, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.